there's a lot of other things aside from the skill set that go into hiring someone, which I think can sometimes be overlooked. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. Now you're probably feeling pretty good about yourself. You may be about ready to apply for a job, or maybe you already have an interview lined up and you're looking for tips and tricks on how you can ace that interview and land the job. That is where I talk to Jessica. She's going to share tons of tips and tricks on how you can actually land your first job, pass your interview, and just do much better in interviews overall. And this is actually part of my complete JavaScript simplified course, where I teach you everything you need to know from the absolute basics all the way to advanced features like security, clean code, and testing inside of JavaScript. It's just under 40 hours of content, and this is part of the interviews that I did for how to help you land your first job. So you can use the link down in the description below and use the code early to get 20% off, but that's only valid for the next couple of days. Now, the first question that I asked Jessica was everybody's favorite question of what do you need to know to actually get an interview at a company? It depends a lot on the company. Um, I do think, this is just my opinion, but it might, might be hard to find that first job if you only have HTML and CSS um, skills. I think you definitely need to know JavaScript and I think having a framework knowledge would be also a good idea. Um, but yeah, I think there's a lot of other things aside from the skill set that go into hiring someone, which I think can sometimes be overlooked, um, you know, when you're just sort of researching how to get a job and stuff. And I think one is you want to be a nice person. <laughs> um, yep. It's kind of a basic thing, but I think that at least when I was helping hiring developers for my team, um, we we did want to hire people that are going to be a good culture fit, and that can obviously mean a lot of different things. But basically, um, yeah, just wanting to hire people who seem like they're excited about the job, but also someone that you could um, work well with. So I think soft skills is kind of an important thing to think about when you're applying for jobs as well. Now, we all probably know you should know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to land your first job, but you may not realize that soft skills play such a huge role, and I really love that Jessica put a lot of emphasis on these soft skills. The next question that I asked her was all about how you can structure your resume, portfolio, and GitHub in order to get more interviews. I also think having a strong portfolio is really going to help you, and also having like a sort of active GitHub repo that's relatively reasonably organized because um, I know that from a hiring standpoint, I would get a lot of links to people's like GitHub and portfolio sites and they were really hard to look through and look for actual code examples. Um, and also the examples on their portfolio, for some reason, a lot of candidates would force you to sign up for on their website before you could actually look at the website, which was very strange and that didn't really help them. Um, so just making sure that you sort of think about things from the employer's point of view and trying to help them be able to look at all your code and your your portfolio as easily as possible. Just make their job as easy as possible and it'll help you. Definitely, yeah. I always tell people that like, whenever you're applying someone, they're probably looking at 100 plus resumes. So if you can make yours easy and painless, they're gonna spend more time looking at it because they, they probably say, oh, I wanna spend you know X amount of time on each resume. And if they spend 90% of that time signing up for your site and trying to find where your code is, they're gonna get annoyed and they're really only gonna have 10% of the time they allotted to actually look at your stuff. But if you make it just painlessly easy, they click the link, all your projects are right there, easily available, easy to look at. It just means that they're gonna spend more time looking at your stuff, more time thinking about you, and they're just gonna like you like subliminally that much more because there's no pain points of having to sign up for a site and that kind of stuff. So just make it as easy as possible and that already is gonna make you look better, even if you have the exact same skills as someone else. Now, the next thing that we talked about is when you're actually in an interview and you don't maybe 100% know the answer to something, what should you do? Yeah, exactly. Um, and I think one, one other thing that can help your employer be able to assess your skills is if you're talking through something, explaining why you did things a certain way, I think being as detailed as possible about your own thought process can really help them understand how experienced you are and the things that you are thinking about, whether or not you're actually implementing them. Um, so I think, yeah, just trying to be as descriptive as possible for giving the reasons why you've done this or that. Mm -hmm, definitely. And I think that's especially important if you like, even if you get something wrong, like let's say you, they ask you a question or they tell you to do a coding assignment and you end up implementing it in some way that's not quite right. If you're able to talk through your process of why you did things and why you made certain choices, it'll probably spin you in a better light because they're like, oh, they thought about all these important things and, you know, maybe just missed up one small detail of it, or maybe they thought about it in a different way than we expected. So by explaining yourself, it's much more like, okay, I understand where they're coming from. And if you don't explain yourself, 
and you get it wrong, it's just like, well, they got it wrong. There's no redeeming factor there. But by explaining yourself, it's like, okay, they got it wrong, but this is why they got it wrong. And they understand 95% of it. It's just that one 5% that they didn't actually understand. Talking through what you're doing is probably one of the best things you can do in an interview to really make yourself stand out more because programming is all about problem solving and talking through your problem solving is really going to show them your skills as a developer. Now, the next thing that we talked about is when you're actually on your first job, what do you do if you don't actually know how to do something? And I think that's something that's super underrated as a junior. Don't be afraid to say, I don't know, because you're expected not to know things. So being open and being like, you know, I don't know how to do this. Can you you know, help assist me or just kind of like show me what I need to do to learn this if you've already tried to figure it out yourself and still kind of stuck is great because it shows the people that you're working with that you're willing and wanting to learn instead of just being like, oh, I know how to do this and then ending up being like three weeks behind the deadline of releasing <laughs> it because you actually didn't know how to do it and you haven't even done anything yet. Yeah, for sure. I think it's hard when you're starting out and saying like, oh, I need help with this. I can't figure it out because, you know, one, if you have imposter syndrome, which like almost everyone does, I think you're like, mm -hmm. oh, no, I'm like showing my weakness or two, like, you know, you're it's just kind of a hard to like. It's a it's a hit to your pride to be like, I don't know how to do this, but yeah, mm -hmm. like you were saying, it's not going to help your company at all if you end up trying to retain your pride, but then miss a deadline. Um, that's probably, that's, that's a very big no-no, especially in the agency world. And the next thing I wanna talk about is figuring out when you're actually ready to start applying. I feel like a lot of people are, especially if you're applying to your first developer job, I think that they think they're not ready when they might be ready to apply. Um, and I think my advice to people in that position would be, even if you don't think you're completely ready, if you feel like you're maybe 75 or 80% there, I think I would still encourage you to at least start applying and that the replies to your um, to your applications will sort of give you info on, you know, where you might stand. Um, so if you're able to land interviews and get past that first stage, then I, you know, you're probably ready to apply to jobs if companies are interested in talking to you more. So I would say apply, maybe err on the side of earlier rather than waiting longer. I really loved how she mentioned that you should apply earlier rather than later because the responses you get from those resumes are really going to help inform you if you're actually ready or not. And if you don't feel like you're quite ready yet or you really want to improve your JavaScript skills, I highly recommend you check out a complete JavaScript simplified course linked in the description and use that code early to get 20% off as long as you use it within the few days of this video coming out. Thank you very much for watching and have a good day.